Hello and welcome to an in-depth review of the iMac 21.5 inch late 2012. If you came here for the 27 inch model, this video is not for you because the 27 inch model has different CPUs, some different CPUs and also completely different GPUs. So this is only for the smaller 21 and a half inch version. It was introduced in 2012 and it is the first of the new design IMAX. Well, it's not new anymore. It's been there since 2012, of course, but the IMAX, they still today look like this. And that is a radical difference because the previous ones, such as that one on the right, uh, they were thicker. And uh, yeah, they continued producing this design until the latest iMac right now. It was made for one year, internal number is iMac 13,1, A14, 18, and it costs right new 1300 bucks for the base model. Now, speaking of processors, the base model, as I bought it before the upgrade, had the Quad i5, 2.7 gigahertz, 3330S. And you could also have a 3470S, which was a little faster at 2.9 gigahertz. But mine here does have the best option, the i7 3770S, 3.1 gigahertz, also quad core. So those were the CPUs. When it comes to GPUs, your options were pretty darn limited. You only had a GT640M from NVIDIA or a GT650M, which was just a tiny bit better than a 640M really. And mine here has a 640M. And both options only had 512 megabytes of VRAM. RAM options, you could get either eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is not user accessible. The 21 and a half inch IMAX, I don't have a hatchback here to upgrade RAM easily, the 27 inch models do. On the back we only have the cooling vent which is pretty tiny but it seems to be doing the job just fine if you install a Mac fan control program. I figured out that the stock uh, setting just lets get the computer super hot. It, like lets the CPU reach temperatures over 90 degrees under load, which is insane. But once you install a, for example, Mac fan control, you can lower it significantly to only like 80 or something under load. Uh, doesn't have a vent up here anymore, like the previous gens, but it does have an intake on the bottom. So on the bottom there's not just the speaker grill, there's also an intake for the CPU fan. So please do not block this because that would basically uh, just keep airflow out. Uh, here's the power button and, and in iMac fashion the ports. You have a headphone jack, a card reader which is really really nice and handy. We get four USB 3.0s, two Thunderbolts and an Ethernet port. Now this isn't an insane amount of ports, but I think there's something for everybody. I really appreciate the Ethernet port and the card reader. Those are two really useful things that many modern Macs do not have anymore. It does still look very modern. In fact, I had a friend here picking something up and he was looking at this thing and he's like, damn, that looks expensive. And I'm like, you know that this is eight years old? And he's like, really? Well, it is because the modern ones, the, the 2020 ones, they still look the same. So the design definitely didn't age. Really, you can't change my mind about that. I don't care what other YouTubers and reviewers say, oh, the bezels are so thick and all that. I think this still looks pretty darn good. And about the bezels, I mean, don't you have other problems? I mean, really, honestly, guys, what do you say? Is this really such a big deal? I don't care too much for bezels on my devices, really. I couldn't care less. They're much, much more important things than the bezel size. But if that's your only problem, then I don't know what's wrong with you. Anyway, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that thinner bezels are 
are bad or anything. I mean, it's nice if it can be done, but why like focus so much on this? It's really not necessary, in my opinion. Just a little ramble there. <laughs> now, coming back to specifications really quick, um, you could get either a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard disk, which even back then was atrocious, or you could get a one terabyte fusion drive, which yeah, is better than a standard hard disk, but still isn't all that great. Or, and that's really rare on these iMacs, I haven't seen a single one listed with this option, you could either get a 256 gigabyte or 512 gigabyte M2 storage. So a really fast SSD that is somewhat proprietary because Apple likes to do that. They also have the same uh, uh, SSD in MacBook Airs and so. And if you can get one of those, I really recommend um, getting those. But they are, as I said, really rare. Now mine in this case has a custom one. It has a SanDisk 480 gigabyte. We upgraded that from the crappy one terabyte hard disk and swapped in here this SSD from SanDisk. So mine has this uh, 480 gigabyte, which is fine. And really speeds it up quite a bit. So if you if you ever that's like my number one buying tip. If you're ever in the market for one of those 21 and a half inch 2012 IMAX, get one with an SSD. That's like my tip number one. The rest really doesn't matter all that much. Eight gigabytes of RAM is still fine. The i5 still fine, but <laughs> the SSD it really makes a difference. So when it comes to screen. We have a really, really nice, that's holding up awesome, uh, 1080p display, 1920 by 1080, 1080p. Uh, I just don't know what um, what the make is. Like, it's probably an LG, and it's got beautiful viewing angles. It's an IPS panel LED display. Again, don't listen too, too much to those reviewers that are spoiled with all their high-end devices. This is still a really nice display. Yeah, it's not 5K or 4K, but let's be honest, do you really need that? Like this is as much as most people really need. It's a really nice display. That's really all a little bit of a history. It's shipped with macOS 10.8 Mountain Lion and it can go up to 10.15 Catalinas. Unfortunately, no big Sur for these models, which is a shame. But you know how Apple is. Um, I'm hoping the community will come out with a hack in the future so that it can run uh, Big Sur on this. And because the 2013 models, they can run Big Sur. And there is really not so much difference between those uh, at all. So just that the uh, 2013 had integrated graphics instead of dedicated. So really apart from that apart from some new processor generations it's almost the same machine so i think it can be done getting big sur hacked on this but we'll see there's no reliable hack out there yet so what is my verdict on this what is my opinion well i still think it's a beautiful machine it's really fast and can do all daily tasks with ease absolutely with ease I even have uh, somebody who might buy this off of me and he runs a car uh, business. He's a used car dealer and he wants to put that into his office and it's definitely overkill for him. And I think it will last him many, many years to come, especially with that i7. Um, so if you're doing lightweight stuff and video editing, not on a professional level, of course, this is still pretty darn good. However, However, here comes the big drawback of those. Well, it's not a drawback just yet, but it will definitely be in the future. This guy right here, the GPU. The problem with this GPU is it isn't all that powerful. And while it cuts 1080p video fine, I tried it. It lags here and there with some fancy title effects. But once you step things up to like 4K or something, which doesn't even make sense on it because it's a 1080p screen, but you get the idea if you try to do that, and it will it will it will not do that anymore. So 
it's really unfortunate that they only have this one option which even is soldered in so no upgrade options anything that's a shame and that's why I'm actually selling it also I personally like to have the bigger screen the 27 inch model so should you get this it really depends on your money guys if you want a reliable Mac that can run 10.15 and that isn't so expensive get it it's really reliable it's refined it, it's silent it's beautiful it works pretty fast especially with the SSD get it but if you're looking into something you can do some professional creative work like After Effects, Final Cut, 3D animating things, look into the 27 inch version. Yes, it will be much ex more expensive, but that has its reasons because people know that those are still pretty good. You have more powerful GPUs, you have different GPU options, you have a bigger screen. Uh, it, it's just uh, overall better machines. If you're really looking for a work machine, I definitely recommend getting the bigger model instead of this. But if you want a reliable Mac, which can still do you know, the occasional video editing, well, the occasional, if you're a YouTuber, this is easily worth the money for you. Uh, I could cut all my videos on this, no problem at all. But I know if you're like a professional photographer or something, maybe get a better GPU. It's really only the GPU limiting you because the CPU, the i7 especially, is still really good, still very fast and it's not holding anything back, but the GPU is. So that is my little review of the iMac late 2012. We had a blast upgrading this, it was pretty fun, a little scary at first, but once you get the hang of it, it isn't all that bad. And still like all these complaints are really on a high level because especially about that graphics card because when you think about it this is an eight year old machine eight years old it runs a very modern version of mac os you could install windows 10 it would be an awesome windows 10 machine it can do all the things with ease with the snap of a finger and show me like, you know, I'm a PC guy. I use a PC every day. Don't get confused with the channel name here. I'm not an Apple fanboy. But show me most PCs after eight years, they're not as good as this. And that's always a buying argument for Macs because they will outlast many PCs. And in this case, it's definitely true. Eight years old, unsupported by Apple officially, but still kicks ass. <laughs> that's a good verdict. Um, so late 2012 iMac definitely much nicer uh, than I thought when I got it first. I didn't really like it all that much. I wasn't really that convinced from it. But now that I've used it, I've edited some YouTube videos for you on this. I've done some work, some coding work as well. I love the display. I love the speedy uh, usability. I like the modern Mac OS. It runs it very smooth. Don't get confused by the modern Mac OS as well. It runs it just as fine as it probably did 10.8. It really is very fast, very snappy. But again, SSD, that's the crucial factor, SSD. Don't really get too much, uh, do, too bogged down, like if you only find an 8 gigabyte RAM model. I think the RAM isn't the problem, it's really only the hard disk. But still, 16 gigs of RAM, that's definitely very nice. Anyway, this is probably the best one you will find. And it's really hard to find one in this con in the, with this configuration, in this condition. And uh, you will probably come across tons of i5 models because the people who bought this, they were most likely not in the market for a higher end processor. They were not really the professional guys. The professional guys always went for the bigger model. So this is a pretty rare configuration. All right, with that said, I like it. It's a great machine. I'm kind of sad to see it go, and if it would be the 27-inch model, I would most definitely keep it. But since it's a smaller one with the GT640, yeah, I'm going to let it go. So, thank you for watching this video, this review. Hope you found it useful and interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.